In this video, we are taking a second look at the Flash Forge Adventure 5X. And there's a couple of reasons why I feel that this 3D printer merits a second look. The first reason is that when I released my video for the Adventure 5X the first time, I made the mistake of releasing it too soon. Flash Forge sent me this machine as kind of a pre-release unit and I was super impressed by it. I made the video for it, I sat on it for a while, and eventually I was like, ah, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm sure by now they have it on the market. Well, they hadn't. They had a lot of things that they were working out. So if you watched that video at the time and were interested in that 3D printer, you couldn't get it then. But you can now. And the second reason is, like I said, I had gotten a pre-release version, but Flash Forge wanted to make some changes before they released it, and so they sent me the changes that they made. So this now represents more accurately the machine that you would get if you were buying it. And I want to be clear, I was impressed with it the way that it was before. These changes were made because Flash Forge wasn't satisfied with this machine and wanted to make it as good as possible. These upgrades include a slight, very slight change to the easily changeable hot end, which we will be talking about later, and the filament holder. These new filament holders do a better job of rewinding the spool and preventing you from getting any sort of tangles as it rewinds the filament out. Absolutely love them. I think that they are definitely better than before, but it didn't hurt the way that they were before, so this just speaks well for Flash Forge. And the third reason why I wanted to take a second look at this 3D printer is because y'all don't love Flash Forge the way that you should. I don't understand why every single one of you aren't just gushing about these machines the way that I gush about these machines. They are great. Please tell me in the comments why you don't love Flash Forge. Longtime watchers will know that I have been a fan of Flash Forge since at least the Adventurer 3 because back then they were doing ease of use with touchscreen interfaces and Wi Fi print delivery at a time when everybody else was dealing with bare Marlin interfaces on their Ender 3s. And yet back then everybody was like, Oh, that, that costs more than an Ender 3. I could get two or, or more Ender 3s for the same price, and I'd rather have more printers than easier printers. And then along comes Bamboo and charges 10 times the price, and everybody's like, ooh, ease of use, best thing ever. I don't... Why? Now, admittedly, I can't say that the 5X, or the 5, really, is doing anything new. They're simply catching up with the current generation of 3D printers. That means faster speeds, and uh, again, still just as easy to use because they've been doing that since the Adventure 3. But where Flash Forge really shines is where they've shined in the past, in bringing the price down while keeping the quality just as high. Yes, the print quality coming off of the Adventure 5M and the Adventure 5X is comparable to the highest end 3D printers that everybody loves these days, to the point that I could hold prints in both my hands from the highest end 3D printer and an Adventure 5X, and I would not be able to tell you which one was which. They are that good. Since my first review of this machine, it has kind of become my workhorse machine. If I have a 3D print that I just need to fire off quickly, well then I throw it at my Adventure 5X. Now, admittedly, I'm not using the four color system in prints, but that four color system is why this has become my workhorse, because I can load it up with four different colors or even four different types of filament, and it automatically rewinds and reloads and clears everything out perfectly for me. So I don't have to sit there and, and swap between different filaments myself. It just does it, and I love that fact of this machine. But the other thing where the Adventurer line really shines is in ease of maintainability. The most common problem that you're going to run into with a 3D printer is a nozzle clog. And whenever that happens, you're going to try a couple of different things to try to clear that nozzle out. And if they don't work, you're going to have to change the nozzle. Now, changing the nozzle on a 3D printer used to be a process that was an incredible pain in the neck. It involved using three hands, two tools, and so many words that would get me demonetized. But the current generation of 3D printers has made that 
fairly easy. It's just two little screws and you can swap them out, right? If you've ever had to change the nozzle, you know what I mean. However, the Adventurer series, they're not satisfied with it even being that easy. Now on the 5M, it's a matter of pushing two buttons, pulling out the old nozzle, popping in the new one. That's great. But on the Adventurer 5X, it's even easier. In fact, I was able to change the nozzle with just one hand while the other hand held the camera filming it. That's amazing. No tools. It's just flip out the connector, pull out the old nozzle, set the new one in there. It feels like it's not sated properly. It feels like there's no way that the filament's going to pop in, but you close everything up, hit go on your next print, and it just works. I love it. Another thing that I love about the 5X and the 5M is that putting the bed on is super easy to do. These 3D printers, like all 3D printers these days, have a magnetically removable build plate. Now, if you've ever used a Bamboo Labs 3D printer, you know that every once in a while you'll start a print and the 3D printer will complain because the bed isn't perfectly seated in place because it's super easy to just have it be cockeyed just a little bit, not in the right place. And that's super frustrating to have to go baby your 3D printer and line up the bed easily. And for some reason, it's just, it's just easy to get wrong on those 3D printers. But on this 3D printer, let me tell you a little experience I had. When I was doing the prints for the 3D printed board game video that I did, I was doing a print on this machine that Part way through, I ran out of filament, but I didn't know that I had run out of filament. So I came, saw the print on the print bed. It wasn't printing, so I assumed it was done. I grabbed the print, looked at it, and realized, oh, it's only about halfway done. And then I touched the screen to wake it up, and it said, yeah, you ran out of filament. Load more, and I'll keep printing for you. And I looked, yeah, I was out of filament. Oh, great. Now, at this point, with most 3D printers, you're done. I've screwed it up. I'm not going to be able to keep this going, but it was still ready to go. And so I thought I'd try it out. There are little notches that help guide the build plate in. And I just slid the build plate in, this time with a print on the build plate, but I was hoping it would be fine. Slid it in into those notches, same as I did when I loaded it the first time, dropped it down, reloaded the filament and hit go. To this day, I cannot tell you where that print paused. It lined itself up perfectly. That is just well-engineered build plates, and I don't know how they did it, but it is better than my experience with other 3D printers. Now, am I saying that I think that FlashForge made the Adventurer 5X better than its closest competitor in every way, but at a quarter of the price? Well, no, there are some elements of this 3D printer that aren't quite as good as other 3D printers. I mean, for one, it's a little bit noisier than those 3D printers. I, I feel like if I'm running this 3D printer next to my recording setup, I can't record a video while it's going. It's just that level of din while it's running. And it's lacking certain quality of life improvements out of the box. There's no camera, so you can't check on your prints. And it's not enclosed and there's no enclosure kit for it. Now you can, however, buy a camera, the same camera that comes with the 5M and you can install that yourself so you can get that functionality. But the 5M camera isn't uh, super high quality, super high resolution. It's good enough for checking your prints on the regular, but I don't think it's great for time lapses. And it would be wonderful if I could build an enclosure. It looks like there's space that I could probably build one. Hey everybody, Editing Room Joe here with a quick update because uh, sometimes it takes me a while to edit these videos and in the time that it takes me to edit these videos, sometimes the truth changes. And in this case, FlashForge is now or will be soon offering an enclosure kit for the Adventure 5X. As I understand it, they have developed it but it's not yet shipping from the US. So I can't get it until August, but believe me, I'm gonna be getting it. I'm gonna be getting the camera. I'm gonna be doing all the upgrades to my 5X. So that's coming soon. But those are minor nits. And quite frankly, this machine like the Millennium Falcon has it where it counts. And if I were building a print farm right now, if I 
had the space to build a print farm. But if I were building a print farm for myself, say I wanted to manufacture a 3D printed board game so that people could buy it, I would use Flash Forge Adventure 5Xs and maybe some 5M Pros to build that farm out entirely because like I said, it's got it where it counts. The quality is as good as other competitors, but it's so much cheaper that I can get more printers for the price. And they're so easy to maintain that if anything goes wrong, downtime will be at a minimum. I love the Adventurer 5X, and I think that if you try them out, you'll love them too. Well, that's it for this video. I wanna thank you very much for watching. And I wanna remind you that you are a child of a loving Heavenly Father cares about you, you're special to him, and so you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, find somebody else to take care of, because we all need each other. I'll see you next time.